Now, again, off the arch of aorta, our very first branch is the brachiocephalic trunk, which we see right here. The middle branch is a left common carotid artery. And then the last branch here is the left subclavian artery. Now, I want to zoom in here real quick. I just want to show you how the brachiocephalic trunk is going to branch. So here's brachiocephalic trunk. And again, it's going to branch into that right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. So remember, left common carotid artery and left subclavian come directly off the arch of aorta, whereas the right side comes from the brachiocephalic trunk. Now, anytime you hear this word common when it pertains to blood vessels, that should tell you that it's going to split into something else. So common carotid artery is going to turn into and it's going to split into internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. Internal carotid artery is the primary route that blood is delivered to the brain. It's also going to look just a little bit bigger than external carotid artery is, and that's due to this structure called the carotid sinus. The carotid sinus has special receptors called baroreceptors, and they are going to detect blood pressure and heart rate. You'll also find some baroreceptors found in the arch of aorta as well. External carotid artery is going to supply structures of the face and the neck, so it does not actually provide blood to anything inside the skull. It will have a branch called superior thyroid artery, and this will be the very first branch coming off external carotid, and it's just going to travel downward and supply the top of the thyroid gland. Here's common carotid artery, and we see that split happening right here. So we also see how internal carotid artery looks a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter than external. That's due to that carotid sinus where the baroreceptors are found. And then we see internal carotid artery dive into the skull, whereas external carotid artery has lots of branches, but we're just going to worry about superior thyroid, which we'll see how that happens here in just a moment. But external carotid artery will not provide blood to anything inside the skull. Now, here, right about right here, we're going to trace common carotid artery up here. And right about here is where that split's going to be happening. We can't really see it happening from this picture, but we're just going to trace external carotid artery up here. And then we see that superior thyroid artery, and we see how that artery dives all the way down to the top of the thyroid gland. Now, off subclavian artery, we have vertebral artery, and that's going to travel the exact same path as we saw with the vein. So it'll go through those transverse foramen of the cervical vertebrae. It'll be the secondary route that blood will get to the brain. But we also have this structure called the thyrocervical trunk. Now, this is a little short branch, but it has three other branches. And the first one is called suprascapular artery. The middle branch is called transverse cervical artery. And then we have the inferior thyroid artery. Off subclavian, we'll still have an internal thoracic artery, which will travel the same path as the vein. It'll go to the anterior thoracic wall right next to the sternum on either side of it. So again, here is that vertebral artery going all the way up through those transverse foramen. And here is the thyrocervical trunk. And we'll zoom in on that in just a moment. And then we have the internal thoracic artery, which will come off and travel to the anterior thoracic wall next to the sternum. Now, as we zoom in here to this thyrocervical trunk, again, the trunk is just this short portion before it actually splits off. So this inferior branch right here is the suprascapular artery. The middle branch right here is called transverse cervical artery. And then this last branch is called inferior thyroid artery, and that's going to come up and travel all the way back around to the bottom of the thyroid gland. And here's that thyrocervical trunk right here. So what I just want to focus on is this inferior thyroid artery as it comes around to the bottom of the thyroid gland 